ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشغل الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> My dear brothers and sisters سيدة عائشة رضي الله عنها narrates with the start of the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Prophet وسلم, used to tighten his waist belt and used to pray the whole night and used to keep his family awake for the prayers. Rawahul Bukhari. So now we are in the blessed 10 days of Ramadan and we are encouraged to tighten our belts, meaning to work harder, to do more acts of worship, to increase in our reading of Quran to increase in the number of salawat during the night and we are encouraged to wake our families up so they too can increase their worship during these particular nights. Our last lecture during Ramadan will be delivered by our brother Shujat Aslam. Brother Shujat has been spreading the message of Islam for nearly two decades from da'wah stalls one-to-one -one discussions through his lectures, khutbas and social media. He plays an active role with the University of Nottingham Islamic Society, Nottingham Trent University Islamic Society, Masjid Omar, 11th West Bridgeford Tawheed Scouts and Nottingham Islam Information Point. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Brother Shujat. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen as salatu was salamu ala rasul al -kareem. Okay, so as our dear brother Haroon said, we're going to talk inshallah primarily about the last 10 nights of Ramadan and its virtues inshallah. So as we begin, you know, Alhamdulillah we're into Ramadan and Ramadan's followed a normal cycle, which is generally before Ramadan, we're quite nervous. We think the fasts are going to be 18, 19 hours, how we're going to cope, this kind of thing. Suddenly Ramadan starts, our bodies take a bit of time to adjust. We feel very tired during the middle of Ramadan and towards the end, Ramadan goes very quickly. This is a reality. In the last week, last 10 days of Ramadan, it just flies by. Before you know it, Eid has arrived. And the danger is, we don't maximize our rewards in the end of Ramadan, which is the most important part of Ramadan. So today's reminder is to encourage myself and my respected brothers and sisters that we really try and motivate and push ourselves, particularly in the end of Ramadan. But as we begin, we need to just think about the amazing virtues of this month. So there are so many rewards of this month that we remind ourselves at the beginning, but then we forget by the end. So because there's just a few of us, let's just try and encourage each other and remind ourselves of some of the virtues and the blessings of this month. So let me begin by asking you, which is the noble quality that we are trying to achieve in this noble month by fasting? Which is the quality? So Allah says in Quran, we're told to fast. Why? Why do we fast? Increase Iman. Not, but Iman is quite a, a very wide word. It's a bit more narrower than that. So in the Quran, it's a bit more specific. Taqwa. Bit, taqwa okay? What does Taqwa mean? What does Taqwa mean? It's because it's, this word isn't easily translated into English. But let's understand that so Allah says that fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon the previous nations so that you can obtain taqwa. So the previous nations, they fasted as well, just as the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, fast. And we fast to obtain taqwa. What does taqwa mean? Fear of Allah. Fear of Allah, okay. Anything else? Yeah? To, or conscious, to be more aware of Allah, to be more conscious of Allah. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he describes taqwa as doing more good deeds, both compulsory and, and recommended, and staying away from bad deeds. This is taqwa, okay? And when you think about it, all of us, would you agree that we are doing more in Ramadan than we did outside of Ramadan? 
obviously we're fasting, aren't we? Uh, unless we fast every day outside of Ramadan, which I don't think I don't, I don't think you do either. It means that we are doing more ibadah in Ramadan than we did outside of Ramadan. Do you agree? So automatically our taqwa has increased. Yes, our consciousness, our awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased. Alhamdulillah for the month of Ramadan that our taqwa has increased automatically, inshallah. Does that make sense? So we fast to obtain taqwa and our level, our nearness to Allah <coughs> increases. Allah loves al mutakun Imagine, Allah loves the people of taqwa. So our whole purpose in life is to obtain the love of Allah and Allah loves the people of taqwa. Ramadan is the month of taqwa. Allah says in the Quran, the most noble in the sight of Allah are those with taqwa. So we want nobility, we want Allah to think that we are noble, good people. Alhamdulillah, we get this in the blessed month of taqwa. So Alhamdulillah for the month of Ramadan. So this is the attribute we are gaining in Ramadan. Can now anybody tell me what are the amazing rewards we are obtaining in Ramadan? Alhamdulillah, we are obtaining taqwa, we agree on this. But in addition to this, Allah is giving us many, many rewards. Can anybody think of any of the rewards we are obtaining in Ramadan? More patience. More patience. Very good, young man. Very good, brother. Sabr. We are obtaining sabr. Yes, a absolutely. And we'll come on to sabr in a, in a little while. Any more rewards we are obtaining? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Any hadith that tells you about forgiveness in Ramadan? Yeah, from one Ramadan yeah. to another Ramadan. Very good. There's a hadith, yes. That's the forgiveness of sins. Very good, uh, brother Harun. Anything else about the rewards of Ramadan? There's some Messi. easy ones. Messi. Mercy, that's right. This is general, some specific one, something to do with your mouths. Okay. Come on, something to do with your mouths and the reward in Ramadan. Is that the, is that the smell from the mouth? Yes, the smell from the mouth of the fasting person is better with Allah than the smell of musk. So when we're fasting, your know, mouth feels dry. This is we think this is the worst thing in Ramadan. This is the best thing with Allah. And imagine this is the thing we find hard. Even this thing is loved by Allah. Imagine the rest of our ibadah of fasting. Yes? So in terms of that hadith, I'll start the hadith. The Prophet said, every deed is rewarded by Allah many times over, up to 700 times. This is the rahmah of Allah. Then Allah says, except for fasting. So everything else so many more times Allah, except for fasting it is for me I will reward it the smell coming from the mouth of the fasting person is better with Allah than the smell of musk and there are two times of joy for the fasting people this is the end of the hadith okay these are part of our reward the Prophet said hadith could see there are two times of joy for the fasting person who can tell me what the times of joy are for the fasting person Yes, brother. While he's breaking his fast. Excellent. He his Alhamdulillah. So look, in an hour's time or whatever less, we're going to open our fast. This is looking forward to having the cool water. It's a very hot day. Alhamdulillah. No, we're not looking forward to this. Alhamdulillah. This is, open. this is a joy. But this is nothing compared to when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the greatest meeting when the slave meets his Lord. And we will be delighted that Alhamdulillah we fast. It's a moment of joy. It will be incomparable for us, that the reward that we get because we are fasting. Alhamdulillah. Make sure we don't waste this in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and the last 10 days of Ramadan. Okay so far? We understand the rewards of Ramadan? Okay. So we covered most of the reward. There is one other hadith that mentions a specific reward as well. To do with Jannah. To do with Jannah. So there's a hadith to do with Jannah and Ramadan. What is that hadith? Very good. So there are eight gates to Jannah. Imagine you arrive at paradise and there's eight gates. There's a Baba Salah, the gate of Salah, the gate of Jihad. There's, all the, there's a Baba Rayan, it's called the gate of the fasting people. Only the fasting people will enter through it. When they have entered, the gate will be closed. Imagine that. So imagine your name. What's your name, young man? Mustafa. Mustafa. Imagine Mustafa's name is called like Mustafa. Enter into Jannah, you are one of the fasting people. Bashir, enter into Jannah, you are one of the fasting people. Harun, all of us, alhamdulillah, imagine. Won't you be delighted by your act of fasting that you will enter into Jannah, subhanallah, just from this act of fasting. Describe some of the attributes of Jannah. Can you describe something of Jannah? This is one of our problems. Someone says to you, describe the house that you want. I want five bedroom, you know, I want two garages, I want this. We can describe all of that. Somebody says to describe Jannah, everyone goes quiet. This is our problem. <laughs> Jannah is supposed to be where we all want to live forever. Let's, let's do a test between myself and my respected brothers. Describe Jannah. River of milk and honey. Uh, more than that. You're right, rivers of milk, honey, and uh, the, uh, it continues. Wine and? Pure water. 
pure water, very good. So imagine going along and you see a river of wine, whatever color it is, and next to it a river of honey, and next to it a river of water, and next to it a river of... Imagine that, just imagine walking, you know you walk along Victoria Embankment, it's very nice, you walk along River Trent, it's very beautiful, but much more beautiful than that. And you're walking along the banks of the river, and they're yours, alhamdulillah, and you're with your brothers, and they're nice and cool, drinking from each of them, alhamdulillah. Hey, amazing, isn't it? When you think about it for a second, some of the rewards of Jannah. That's it, just rivers? Huris. Huris. Wives, beautiful wives. Alhamdulillah. More beautiful than anyone can, can imagine. Pure, restraining their gazes just for you. Alhamdulillah, this is the reward of Jannah. Anything else than Jannah? Are you able to fly? They're not able to fly, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, but the person will have whatever they wanted. The point being, you'll have mansions. <laughs> Okay. Mansions with rivers flowing beneath them. Yes, never going to be hungry in Jannah. So you know, when we eat our food today, whatever food we have, you know, after what, what's the nature? You will find after 15 minutes, we can't look at another piece of pizza. We can't look at anymore. We're full, aren't we? You know, we get too full. But in Jannah, we're never going to have that feeling. Oh, I'm too full. I feel like oh, that's enough. No more now. You're going to be full just to the right level. You're going to have drink in the most beautiful drink, and it's always going to be cool and refreshing. You're going to have homes with rivers beneath it. Rooms upon rooms, the best of companions and the best thing of all, the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's going to be forever, not for one day, not for one week, not for like the month of Ramadan, for eternity you have arrived there, how did you get there? Through the gate of Jannah, to, sorry through the gate of fasting, alhamdulillah for the Baba Rayyan, see the rewards of the month of Ramadan, when a person stops and thinks about it, and they, okay I'm hungry now, it's been 17 hours, I'm, I'm thirsty, I'm tired, but in Jannah I will never be hungry, I will never be thirsty, I will never be tired inshallah in Jannah, doesn't fasting because alhamdulillah is a breeze man, compared to what I'm going to get, this is why, this is all linked to Iman, Sahaba's Iman was so level, so high, they would look forward to Ramadan for six months, imagine all they could think is Ramadan, 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 because their Iman was so high. They knew what they were getting. With us, we don't know what we're getting. And that's the problem. You see somebody, I met this lady at work, said, how's your fasting going? I can't wait till it finished. I can't wait till it's over. She's exhausted. Yeah? I knew, that, you know, sister, you don't really understand what you're getting in exchange. You know, if something is difficult, you have to work, for example, 25 hours, and you don't see the reward at the end of it, it's very hard. But if you work 25 hours, at the end of it, alhamdulillah, you're going to get a thousand pounds. Working is easy, no problem. I'm going to get 10,000 pounds. It's easy for you. When you understand the rewards. When you don't understand the reward, things become difficult for us. And that's our problem. You, all of us, we fast so many hours, so long. You ask the average person, what's the reward of fasting? And we don't know it. This is the problem, isn't it? It's a fundamental problem. We go through, alhamdulillah, we have iman, we do it, we know we have to do it. But we don't obtain the pleasure from it because we don't understand the ajr and the rewards of fasting. So now we remind ourselves, the last few days and nights of Ramadan, there is so much reward. You know, fasting is a shield on Yawmul Qiyamah. Yeah, the gates of Jannah are open in this month. The gates of Jahannam are closed. All of these are the rewards of this month of Ramadan. So yes, we're tired, we're hungry, we're thirsty, but don't give up at this stage. You know, the end, the end of the, the goalpost is you can see it. Don't fall at this final stage. Rather, more energy in this stage. Yes. So we understand the rewards of Ramadan. In this Ramadan, Allah is... So we, we, we know we're fasting to gain the quality of taqwa. Yes. We understand the rewards of Ramadan. Yes. Now we think, Allah is, is, is teaching us a certain qual two qualities I want to remind ourselves that we should have been learnt about in Ramadan. One the brother has mentioned before. This is the quality of sabr. Yeah? Fasting, teaching us patience. The food is available. The drink is available. It's a hot day. The cool water is in your hand, but you're not going to touch it. This is patience, isn't it? This is the patience that only comes from Iman. How many of us have said, you know, I want to lose weight? And you take your sandwiches into work and you say, I'm not going to eat my sandwiches until 2 o'clock. By 11 o'clock, you've eaten them. You don't have any patience. How many people? Stop, stop, stop. But when Ramadan comes, alhamdulillah, all of us, 18, 19 hours, you could never imagine that if you weren't fasting, you could stay without food and drink. You could never, it's a question of Iman. But Allah is teaching us, we have the ability to be patient. We have the ability to be sabr. And this is our problem. We live in a world, everything has to be right now. You know, uh, you go to a restaurant, the meal, fast food has to be right now. You're on the phone, you start waiting more than two minutes, start complaining, they have to put music on because people get angry. No one has got any patience anymore. No one has got any sabr anymore. This is Allah is teaching us the importance of sabr and of patience. But patience, we are patient with our food and drink. 
Have we been patient with our eyes in Ramadan? This is very important. What's the fasting of the eyes? The scholars have described the fasting of the eyes. What do you imagine the fasting of the eyes is? What do you imagine the fa- You know, it's obvious what the fasting of the stomach is. No food and no drink. What do you imagine the fasting of the eyes might be? Lowering your gaze. Lowering your gaze. And this is a hard fitna. It's living in this weather, in this society. I remember just before Ramadan. You know, just before Ramadan comes, you think, I'll get a big meal in, just before Ramadan starts. So I went to the chicken chip shop at lunchtime. Muslim guys working there. I went in to have my meal. He goes, brother, the fasting is going to be very hard this Ramadan. I said, yes, it is. It's 19 hours, 20 days. very hard. He said, yeah, yeah, I know that. That's okay. But I'm working in the city center. The weather is hot. Look at all the fitna outside. How am I going to control my eyes? He understood that fasting is not just controlling your hunger and your thirst. It's more than that. It's having sabr with our eyes. It's not that we come to the time of iftar now and we start looking at inappropriate material now. It's not it's the iftar time, not the start of haram time. This, this is what we do. Many of us, we fast during the day. As soon as the iftar comes, everything comes out. The cigarettes come out, the weed comes out, they're looking at the inappropriate, they're putting the music on, and we think, I've got five hours of cramming all of this in. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous, isn't it? This is the whole point. This is what people do. They, they, we can cram it all in, we've got to do more of it now, just to get it all in, and when Fajr comes, stop again. You're losing the whole point about Ramadan, isn't it? Ramadan's not about that. You know, Allah, who are we trying to trick here? Allah is the most wise, Allah is the all seeing, Allah is the all hearing, Allah is the all knowing. These kind of games, they don't work. They really don't work. But this is our mistake that we make, we make now. We shouldn't do that. We should understand what we're trying to do. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us ease in the night. But it has, the ease has to be halal. So the patience, in these last few days and nights of Ramadan, we have to have sabr with our social media. We have to have sabr with our, what we listen to. We have to have sabr with our speech. Not backbiting, not lying, not cheating. This is, the, this is the fasting of the tongue. The fasting of the ears is not listening to inappropriate material. You know, not listening to things that are harmful to ourselves. This is, so fasting is beyond the stomach. Does that make sense? There's levels of fasting. So in the last few days and nights of Ramadan, let us all, inshallah, make the niyyah that I'm going to try my hardest to lower the gaze. I'm going to try my hardest, inshallah, not to listen to inappropriate things. I'm not going to back by anybody in these last days and nights of Ramadan. Even beyond that, obviously, but especially in these days and nights of Ramadan, I'm going to go to the next level in this month. Make sense? We can do it, inshallah. Yes, only five days. Come on, brothers. Five or six days, we can do it, inshallah. So let's try and get our fasting to the next level. Beyond, you know, we can do the stomach bit now. We can do it. We, we've done it for 23, 24 days. We can do this bit. It's the next level now, inshallah. So, Ramadan teaches us sabr and it teaches another quality, which is generosity, compassion. You know, when you look at this month, and alhamdulillah, you know, in uh, 40 minutes' time, we're going to have our food. Imagine arriving at this point of the day and night and there's no food for us. Just, just you know, we don't think about these things. This is our problem. You know, if something comes on TV sad, we react. You know, something comes, we react. But in our hearts, we don't stop and ponder that there are people going through a famine today. You know, people without any food and drink. Parents having to make decisions about which child to feed. People with bombs coming all, and you know, all of these kind of things are happening in this world, in this time. And the world, the life, it changes day by day. Overnight, it changes. Where is our generosity in Ramadan? Day 23 has arrived. How much have I given for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, some of us, we don't have much. Don't cry. Don't lose sleep. Allah is the most generous. It's not about how much you give. It's about the quantity that you give relative to what you have. So in a hadith, the Prophet said, one dirham, like one pound, is more than a hundred thousand dirhams. So imagine, the companion said, how can that be? Imagine there's one pound here and there's a hundred thousand here. What's more? And the young man will say, this one is more. The hundred, everyone will say this. Yes? No. Rasulullah says, no, this one is more. Why? Because the person, he only has two dirhams, he gives away one dirham. This one has, he's a billionaire. Okay, he gives away a hundred thousand, but he's a man's a billionaire, dropping the ocean to him. This one has done more. This one has done more in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given away half of what he had. This one gave away a lot more, but it was relative to what he had, it was nothing. This one sacrificed more. So it's not a question of how much I've I given overall, but relative to the means that Allah has given me, what have I given? So we shouldn't think, you know, I'm a student or I'm this and that, I've only got 100 pounds. Relative to that 100 pounds, what have you given for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if your salary is in the thousands, then what have you given as well? So this is the month of giving. And I remind myself and my brothers the importance of giving and also of zakat. 
You know, when you look at the poverty in the Muslim world today, if we all paid our zakat properly, the poverty would be eradicated. But many of the Muslims, even zakat, they don't pay. And what do they say? Oh, the charities will take half of it. I'm not going to pay any zakat. No, this is, this is wrong. You give, you find the, the best charity that you can, you give. After that, your imana is over. You're given to them. It is their responsibility. But you should know, my respected brother, in the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, that the one who does not give zakat, and he has animals like camels or sheep or and, uh, rams. And he said, on Yom al Qiyamah, those animals will come bigger and stronger than they ever were, and they will trample him. And the one who had wealth and gold, he didn't pay zakat, it would be burned on him. Imagine sizzling metal burning through your skin. Why? Because you didn't pay zakat. You didn't pay zakat and you'll be punished. And don't think that my account is online and it will not capture you. Don't be foolish like that. In whichever way you have tried to put your money, Allah will hold you to account. And this is the mercy of Allah. If your income, if your savings are below the nisab, a few hundred pounds, you don't have to pay zakat. This is Allah's mercy. If, you're, if you don't have the money, alhamdulillah, no sin upon you, no sin at all. You had the near, if you had it, you would give it, alhamdulillah. This is the mercy of Allah. You don't have the means to go to hajj, alhamdulillah. There's no problem, no sin. You don't have the means. But... If Allah has given you the wealth now, Allah has given you the risk, and then you don't pay it, be careful now. Now you're going to territory that's not allowed. Now you're being sinful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the wealth. So this Ramadan has teaching us, inshallah, be sabr and be compassionate. And in the last few days and nights of Ramadan, be as much compassionate as you can be, inshallah. As much compassionate as you can be. Now, we enter into, or we have entered into the last third of Ramadan. As our dear brother Harun mentioned, the very well-known hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where his wife, beloved wife, says that Umm al-Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Rasulullah ﷺ would do three things. He would, what? Wake up his family for salah. Wake them up for ibadah. He would stay away from marital relationships with his wives, and he would engage in worship throughout the night. So three things. The first thing, he would wake his family up for ibadah. You know one of our problems, ibadah is not just for me. It's also my wife, my children. We have to encourage others, our friends and family as well. You know what, we should encourage other people as well. They can't do maybe as much as we can, but they should, everyone should be at a higher level. So the first thing we should be doing this Ramadan, encouraging others. As our brother Harun and IP have arranged this talk, alhamdulillah, this is sadaqah. They are encouraging me and you for more ibadah. They are fulfilling that part of the hadith. Like Rasulullah would wake up, wake up his family, his wives. In the same way, we should encourage each other. Maybe there's somebody, he's not done anything in Ramadan. Grab hold of that person now. Try and bring him to the masjid. Maybe there's a person you know is not even fasting in Ramadan. Even at this point, go to him. Try and soften his heart. Brother, come, you must start fasting now. You know, help people. This is the way of the Muslim. You always, she's always helping each other. So the Prophet ﷺ didn't just do ibadah himself, he woke his families up. So we need to wake, uh, wake our families and our communities up, inshallah. First point. He وسلم, would not engage in any kind of relationships with his wives, meaning he would leave these kind of things. In these nights of Ramadan in particular, it's not a time for relationships with our families and these kind of things. It's not a time for gaming. It's not a time for social media. It's not a time for watching the whole of the cricket game over and over again. It's not a time for that. Not in these nights of Ramadan. You want to do some of this stuff in the daytime, in the gaming? Okay, well, it's up to you. But particularly in the nights of Ramadan, these are nights of ibadah. It's very important. The sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ was what? That he would not engage in relationships even with his wife. It's halal. It's allowed in this time. But he ﷺ would not engage in them. So the second principle is particularly in the nights of Ramadan, we leave all of these things. Just a few hours, my respected brothers in Islam and my sisters. It's not long. It's just a few hours. And the third thing was what? He would engage in ibadah. It's very important he would engage in ibadah. What was the ibadah that he ﷺ would engage in? We should try our hardest to pray our salah in Jummah. It's very important. Come from Maghrib, come from Isha, pray our salah. Pray our taraweeh. We should engage in salah. Try and pray with concentration. You know, during the whole of Ramadan, have we done one salah with khushu, with concentration, with thinking about the words, with putting the dunya behind us, with doing dua in sujood? Have we done one salah in the whole of Ramadan with good understanding 
Then the companions there will be weeping in their salah. Okay, maybe we can't get to that level. But the least we can do, we don't want to exit Ramadan without having doing some good quality salah. Yes, we know we have to do the salah, we understand that. But khushu, having concentration in salah. So in these nights of Ramadan, engage in salah. Engage in Quran. This is the month of Quran. What's the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, linking fasting and Quran and Day of Judgment? So linking fasting and Quran and the Day of Judgment. Brownie points, you get extra pakora if you get this one right. <laughs> ah, you see, he likes pakora. <laughs> Anyone know? So Quran came on the 27th month? No, sorry, the, uh, the well, the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan and they say in Laylatul Qadr from one level of the heavens to the other but the hadith I'm thinking about something different I'll give you a clue it's to do with intercession interceding okay. interceding the yes how? a bit more? I got the <laughs> okay. the, the hadith the Prophet says is you can half it inshallah is that he said that Fasting will intercede on the day of judgment. Said, I kept him hungry during the day, and Quran will say he stayed up at night reciting me during the night. Yes, yeah, so imagine, you know, on that day, fasting will say, stand up in our defense that we stayed hungry for fasting and we spent the night reciting the Quran. Quran will intercede on the day of judgment. You know, it's day. Is day 23 today of Ramadan or the 24th night tonight? Yeah, yeah, day 23, 24th night. How much Quran have we read? Yeah, I don't think there are any Arabs here. So, uh, I don't know, I don't think there are any Arabs here. That means most of us read Quran very slowly, <laughs> okay? We read Quran slowly. But, you know, have we managed to spend at least an hour or so with the Quran? Have we tried to get to just 23? Are we trying to do one khatam of the Quran in Ramadan? You know, how much time have we spent in, with the Quran in Ramadan? This is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing less than the speech of Allah. We read many things. These are the nights of Quran. These are the nights of Salah. The nights of Quran, nights of dhikr, doing dhikr, it's so easy. It's easy in the tongue, heavy in the scales. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. How many times do we say this? You know? And it's the nights of making dua. So the Prophet said, there are three types of people that dua will not be unanswered. One of them is the fasting person. So our duas, inshallah, will not be unanswered. How many of us ask Allah, you know, really asking Allah. You know, if I want something really, a brother Bashir, I really want it of him. I'll take it to one side, Akhi Bashir, how are you? Da, 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 da. I really need this, I'll explain it all to him. Da, da. And inshallah, he's my close, he'll give to me. But when we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like, oh Allah, give me this, da, da, and we don't even know what we're saying. And where is our pausing? Where is our making dua, glorifying Allah, sending drood upon the Prophet Wasallam, mentioning the names of Allah, making tawbah for our mistakes and asking Allah for what we want. You know, we want something. Allah is the one who gives. Allah can give beyond we, our imagination. Our lives can be changed overnight. These are the nights of dua. So these are nights of what? Of standing in Salah in Qiyam. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever stands in Qiyam and whoever prays in Laylatul Qadr with Iman, hoping for reward, his sins will be forgiven. So in these nights, is the nights of Salah, the nights of Quran, nights of Dua, nights of Dhikr. In terms of Dua, one time, Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet ﷺ, if tonight is Laylatul Qadr, what Dua should I read? What du'a should I read in Laylatul Qadr? This would be interesting. Raise your hands if you know the du'a of what's the answer of the Prophet ﷺ. Raise your hands. One, two, three, four. Okay, about half of us. This is very important though. This is, the very important. This, is the very, this is the du'a of these nights. This is the point. This is what we need to be trying to... This is why knowledge is so important. Knowledge is so important. A little bit of knowledge goes a very long way. Imagine, this is what Rasul said, say this du'a. We should be saying this on our tongues all the time. What is the du'a? Allahumma innaka afoon to hibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the one who pardons. You love to pardon, so pardon me. SubhanAllah. Yes? So Allah, you are the one who pardons. Only Allah pardons us for our mistakes, and we have done so many mistakes. You love to pardon. You know, this is an attribute of Allah. Allah loves to forgive. Allah loves to pardon, so pardon me. We need to be thinking about the mistakes that we made in our lives, the things we did wrong. And all of us, we have like a mountain of sins. It's between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a time for the pardoning of those sins, for them to be erased from our record. So all of the times, Allahumma inna 
All the time in this night, we should be trying, our tongue should be moist with this dhikr and with this dua. This is what we should be doing. So we understand what we need to be doing in these nights. When is the night in Ramadan? What, when does the night begin and when does the night end? When does the night begin and when does the night end from an Islamic perspective? Maghrib to Fajr. Yeah. So most people, they go into automatic pilot after Isha and Taraweeh. That's when the night starts. Alhamdulillah, try and be a little bit better. From Maghrib time, you have our food, trying to live in, you, you know, a bit of zikr, a bit of dua, all of these hours. And, you know, we, many of us, we think, we've been complaining that fast are so long, they are 19 hours. So there's hardship and there is ease. Maybe the hardship is a fast in 19 hours. The ease, the night is just 5 or 6 hours. That's all it is, subhanAllah. You know when winter comes, we will not be able to stay up the whole night in Ramadan. 15 hours, we can't do it. But in the nights of the summer, when they're just 5 or 6 hours, you know, alhamdulillah, it's quite easy for us to spend the whole night in ibadah. You know, obviously, Maghrib, we pray, Isha, we pray, Tarawi, Tarawi finishes what time? You know, to half 12, quarter to one. You know, our Sahul starts at 2.50, 2.30, whatever it is. Just last hour to go. We can easily spend the whole night in ibadah. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that we spend every one of the odd nights of Ramadan, at the last final nights, in ibadah. This would be a great thing for each and every one of us. Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah to make it so. so. Try and push yourself, try and stay awake. That time, what's the most dangerous time? After Tarawih until Fajr Sahur time. That hour and a half is a time to kill really, isn't it? Yeah? Most of us just want to be chill a bit, a bit social, whatever it's going to be. That is, a, that is the time where we try and race ahead of going to be the best. That is really the time, especially the last third of the night. Allah descends to the lowest parts of the heaven. It's a time really to make dua. So these are the nights of Ramadan and these are the times of Ramadan. When is Laylatul Qadr? When is Laylatul Qadr? What's the answer to that question? Well, the difference yeah. Some yeah. say odd nights, some say the last 10 nights. Okay. Odd yeah. nights. Odd nights of... Yeah. I think the strongest opinion, and Allah knows best, is that the Laylatul Qadr is in the odd of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And if you can't do the last 10, even the last 7, 23rd, 20, 20, but these odd nights basically. So yesterday was an odd night. Tomorrow night will be odd night, Wednesday will be 27, odd night, and so on and so forth. So is these odd nights of Ramadan from Maghrib till Fajr are the most important time. In these times, they what, six hours, three nights left, whatever it is, 20 hours. These are the times really that we should try our hardest. The Prophet ﷺ was told when Laylatul Qadr was. Imagine he was told. He came down, hadith, he came down to tell the people. Then he saw two people arguing and the knowledge was taken away from him. The knowledge was taken away from him. So Rasulullah was informed of Laylatul Qadr, the knowledge was taken away from him. And so but there's a wisdom. The scholars say there's a wisdom. If we all fixed one night for Laylatul Qadr, the mosque would be full that night and the rest of the night it would be back down to 10% of the normal people. And this is what some people have done. They have fixed the 27th night of Ramadan for Laylatul Qadr. This is a mistake. It's not saying it's not. It may well be. It's one of the odd of it's one of the last 10, it's one of the last 7. It's a real chance it could be Laylatul Qadr. But no one can say definitively it is Laylatul Qadr. And one of the mistakes is that people go there on the 27th, they complete the Quran on the 27th, and after that, it's just like the last 10 through the Quran, and that's it for day 28, day 29, day 30, if we have night 30. And 29th night of Ramadan, in many masajid, there's hardly any real ibadah going on because the Quran has been completed, or fathers have gone home, and very little. This is not the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right till the finishing line, right till the end, race, push, be the best inshallah. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is when Laylatul Qadr is. What was the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He would do itikaf, meaning all the time, day and night, he would be in ibadah. We can't do that. But the least that we can do in these final few nights of Ramadan, as I say tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Friday night, this is it. This time next week, Sunday, it will not be Tarawih. Because if Eid is Monday, the last Tarawih will be Saturday night. This is the shortness now. A week today, it will all be over. Even Eid may have gone, Eid could be Sunday. This is the shortness of the time that is left now. Just a few days of Ramadan and it will fly by. Especially after 27th, the whole vibe changes, everything changes. But be wise this year. 
push yourself right till the end of these blessed months and this is the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Laylat Qadr is a gift from Allah it's a gift really the previous nations they used to live much longer than hers and they used to worship Allah for many more years than us Allah gave hers Laylatul Qadr this is a gift to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam don't turn your back on this beautiful gift push yourself try hard yeah I know it's hard sometimes I know it's difficult, sometimes we get bored, you know, mix and match, do different things, bit of Quran, bit of Rabi Salah, come to the masjid. And alhamdulillah, Nottingham University does Laylatul Qadr, for example, in the 27th night, maybe try and come there, 29th night if you can do. You know, but the point is, be within people. It's sometimes if you're by yourself, it's very easy to get very tired and just nod off a bit. Try your hardest inshallah, to push yourself, motivate, get good company, good companions, and in these most precious of nights, you know, try and stand up in ibadah of Allah and Laylatul Qadr, may Allah accept it from us all. Subhanahu wa bihamdi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilan, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. I think there might be questions. Jazakallah khair for the shujat. Is there any questions, brothers? Any questions? Um, is there more reward in, um, in reading uh, the Quran in, uh, you know, if you read in English as well? Do you, do you get a reward as well or is it just Arabic that you should stick to? Uh, if you can repeat it for the yeah, yeah. Is it better for us to read the Quran in Arabic or in English? That's correct, isn't uh, it? Yeah? No, is the reward the same? The reward the same. Yeah, I think for what I know, Allah knows best. In these nights, if you read in Arabic, it perhaps would be better. Lang Arabic is the language that it was revealed in. You might have the English next to it, might be reading the Arabic, reading English inside of it. Alhamdulillah, that's fine. But putting that, if we know Arabic, and to put the Arabic away and just to concentrate on English, that wouldn't be a wise thing for us to do. Allah knows best, especially in these nights. Because we know that every letter has so much rewards, isn't it? Every letter that you recite, you have to recite it in Arabic for that reward, inshallah. But we are gaining knowledge, and but there may be people amongst the revert people, for example, that do not have that. Arabic language, Alhamdulillah, you read the translation to the best of your ability, Allah is the most merciful. And you slowly you learn the Arabic and you get to that position, Alhamdulillah, but in the meantime, you do the best that you can, inshallah.